Vladimir Putin criticizes Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau for not addressing the Ukrainian parliament's honoring of a Nazi SS member during President Zelensky's visit. In a conversation with Tucker Carlson, Putin expresses concern about the revival of Nazi ideologies and condemns the applause given by Ukrainian officials. The discussion delves into the persistence of Nazi influence and the challenges of denazification, highlighting the need to eradicate those who support and perpetuate such ideologies. Don't miss. How did the controversy in the Canadian Parliament unfold during Zelensky's visit? What is the significance of denazification in the context of Putin's statements? How does Putin propose addressing and controlling Ukrainian nationalism to prevent the resurgence of Nazi ideologies? I say that Ukrainians are part of the one Russian people. They say, no, we are a separate people. Okay, fine. If they consider themselves a separate people, they have the right to do so. Malwisti, if they consider themselves a separate people, they have the right to do so. We recognize the essential principles that allow Ukrainians to determine their identity, ensuring their personal and cultural autonomy is protected. But not on the basis of Nazism, the Nazi ideology. Yeah, but not on the basis of Nazism, the Nazi ideology. Strongly opposes the adoption of Nazi ideology as a core aspect of national identity. It firmly rejects extremist beliefs and advocates for embracing values rooted in freedom and democracy. Would you be satisfied with the territory that you have now? I will finish answering the question. You just asked the question about neo-Nazism and denazification. Look, the president of Ukraine visited Canada. This story is well known, but being silenced in the Western countries. This story is well known but being silenced in the Western countries. Discussions revolve around the possible suppression of information, emphasizing the utmost importance of open dialogue, freedom of expression, and the essential role of transparency. The Canadian Parliament introduced a man who, as the Speaker of the Parliament said, fought against the Russians during the World War II. Well, who fought against the Russians during the World War II? Hitler and his accomplices. It turned out that this man served in the SS troops. He personally killed Russians, Poles and Jews. The SS troops consisted of Ukrainian nationalists who did this dirty work. The president of Ukraine stood up with the entire parliament of Canada and applauded this man. How can this be imagined? The president of Ukraine himself, by the way, is a Jew by nationality. The president of Ukraine himself by the way, is a Jew by nationality. We emphasize the president's Jewish heritage, acknowledging how the unique characteristics and historical background contribute to shaping the individual's identity. Really, my question is, what do you do about it? I mean, Hitler's been dead for 80 years. Nazi Germany no longer exists. And so, true. And so, I think what you're saying is you want to extinguish or at least control Ukrainian nationalism, but how? How do you do that? Listen to me. Your question is very subtle, and I can tell you what I think. Do not take offense. Your question is very subtle, and I can tell you what I think. Do not take offense. To embrace the democratic ethos fully, one must appreciate the nuances of questioning. This fosters an environment where open and respectful dialogues thrive, blending seamlessly with thoughtful contemplation. Of course. This question appears to be subtle. It is quite pesky. You say Hitler has been dead for so many years, 80 years, but his example lives on. People who exterminated Jews, Russians and Poles are alive. But his example lives on. People who exterminated Jews, Russians and Poles are alive. It's essential to address the lasting impacts of historical events and confront the remnants of dangerous ideologies. We must actively engage with the complexities, allowing us to freely explore historical awareness and learn from past lessons. And the president, the current president of today's Ukraine, applauds him in the Canadian parliament. 
gives a standing ovation. Can we say that we have completely uprooted this ideology if what we see is happening today? Can we say that we have completely uprooted this ideology if what we see is happening today? The effectiveness of efforts aimed at eradicating harmful ideologies, suggesting that more action may be needed if these beliefs continue. It emphasizes the importance of accountability in democracy and the continuous search for lasting solutions. That is what denazification is in our understanding. We have to get rid of those people who maintain this concept and support this practice and try to preserve it. We have to get rid of those people who maintain this concept and support this practice and try to preserve it. Embracing democratic principles, this core value defends societal norms and opposes destabilizing influences. It advocates for taking firm actions against those who promote harmful ideologies. That is what denazification is. That is what we mean. Right. Putin's remarks bring attention to the unsettling incident in the Canadian Parliament and underscore the global concern about the persistence of Nazi ideologies. The interview with Tucker Carlson adds depth to the conversation by exploring the complexities of denazification and Putin's call to eliminate individuals supporting such beliefs. The public is left with questions about the effectiveness of efforts to combat Nazi influences and the responsibility of world leaders in addressing historical legacies. Vladimir Putin's critique of Ukrainian nationalism, particularly in relation to Nazi ideology, can be perceived as an endeavor to uphold historical accuracy and denounce the ideology responsible for he now's atrocities. Fundamental principles come into play as we earnestly confront historical realities. Putin seems to suggest that certain narratives, like the incident in the Kanadian parliament, remain suppressed in Western nations. His criticism extends to information control and media narratives, aligning with the notion of challenging the democratic value of transparency and grappling with uncomfortable truths. Putin's stance resonates with his perspective on denazification. Emphasizing the persistent existence of the ideology and urging continued opposition to extremist beliefs. This underscores the necessity for a genuine reckoning with the past to shape a meaningful and responsible future. Examining Putin's response to Tucker Carlson's assumption that Ukrainian nationalism needs restraint, one can interpret it as a critique of simplistic solutions and a plea for a nuanced understanding of historical heritage. Putin challenges the assumption that Hitler's demise and the downfall of Nazi Germany automatically eliminate the influence of Nazi ideology. This aligns with the concept of maintaining vigilance against extremist ideologies and upholding personal and social responsibility. Putin advocates for the removal of individuals endorsing the Nazi concept. His criticism extends to the inconsistency in the behavior of political leaders, highlighting the Ukrainian president's applause for an individual tied to the SS unit. Notice the subtlety in Tucker Carlson's question and Putin's request not to react angrily. Diplomatic tactics, adherence to principles, and acknowledging the sensitivity of issues all contribute to dissecting the complexities surrounding discussions on historical guilt and responsibility. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content. And although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, 
I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.